Danger, solitude, mystery, survival. These things have activated the neurons of modern day consumers since the most dangerous game. We've all heard the story before. Our hero becomes stranded on an unfamiliar and inhospitable island. They battle the perils of nature, hostile locals, a mysterious creature, and their own declining mental state to persevere and escape. This is not that. Here's a fun fact for all you self-proclaimed schizos. Isle was one of the very first games I considered making a video on when I was initially tossing around the idea of doing these reviews. I played it back in 2021 with my brother, 713 Steam, and we had a blast trying to fix the plane and escape without getting shot by soldiers or violated in the night by monsters. Even then, I sensed that there was something deeper to the island than the game was letting on. That if I had enough patience and diligence to look for them, I'd find the answers about the nature of Isle. Until recently, I had no idea just how right I was. Join me then, as we look at one of Roblox's most deceptively deep survival games in this installment of Skit Reviews. But before that, a word from our sponsor. I'm dry! Agent Pine, we're running out of options! We just need to hold out till 9 o'clock. It's their bedtime. Wait, I see the leader. Skitto, konnichiwa. Arigato, sugoi Nintendo. Take him out quickly. Ho ho ho, anime hentai. Subaru, arigato, jiburi. Toyota to nani Panasonic, Nissan. We can't get to him, man! This might be the end for us! There's no one I'd rather be fighting alongside. When we're together, we can overcome anything. Pine! Oh, oh no, no. G come on, man, hold on, we can, we can fix you. Skit, his chair. Don't let him steal the video. Blah. Don't you hate when this happens to you? Projecting a bulletproof force field takes years of training to pull off, and all that work is undermined by a subpar gaming chair. If that sounds like you, then you're in luck. My first ever official sponsor, eWin, specializes in producing comfortable, high-end PC gaming chairs so you can reach your full gaming potential. eWin was kind enough to send me one of their Champion Series models, and I'm being totally honest when I say that this thing is a godsend. A lot of people don't know it, but I'm built like this guy in the cake department. Because of this, it's difficult for me to lay down or sit in most chairs without hurting my lower back with bad posture. Fortunately, Ewin's Champion Series Gaming Chair features adjustable back and neck pillows so I can customize my sitting experience for maximum comfort. The amount of modularity and adjustability in this thing is just insane. No matter what body type you have or how you sit, this chair can work for you. I actually have the left armrest on mine set a bit higher and further outward than the right one because it's easier to reach my keyboard that way. Now, we all know that the gaming space is populated by many less than healthy people. Ewin knows this too, so all all their chairs are rated for up to 400 pounds, a hundred more than many competitors. It's not just functional though, all the chairs look absolutely snazzy. With the abundant use of soft, stain-resistant leather and tasteful pattern choices, you'll be the talk of the town, assuming the town is in your bedroom for some reason. It's such an improvement over my last chair that I strapped three pounds of tannerite to that thing and blew it up for your enjoyment. If you're interested in checking out Ewin Gaming Chairs, you're in luck. They're offering a limited time discount just for you viewers out there. Use code SKIT at checkout to get a 20% discount on any purchase. It also helps me out when you visit the links in the description, so please give them a click right now. You can watch the video in the background. Thanks to Ewin for sponsoring the channel, and we are back to the video. Isle doesn't have to be a complicated game. You and your teammates are prisoners on board a ship. The soldiers guarding you are very friendly, and if you say balls three times in the chat, they reward you for lightening the mood. 
The ship is attacked by a sea monster and crashes, knocking you unconscious. When you come to, your ship wrecked on a mysterious island and your captors are nowhere to be seen. A temporary shelter has been erected near the crash site. There, you see a shadowy, humanoid figure with glowing red eyes standing above the remains of one of the soldiers. He disappears as you approach and you acquire a tablet used by the ship's crew. The survivors of the crash managed to broadcast a distress message before you woke up, and reinforcements will arrive the next day to extract them. You're on the clock. Your primary goal is to escape the island. As you explore the various locations and collect more useful weapons and equipment, you learn more about the lore and uncover the many secrets of the island. You have five days to escape. On day two, the extraction team arrives and begins patrolling. If they spot you, they'll gun you down without a second thought. On day three, a tropical storm nears the island, not only obscuring your vision and threatening your prospects of escape, but also emboldening the monster that stalks you, allowing him to become more aggressive in the overcast daytime where he previously only attacked at night. If you're still on the island by the time day six rolls around, your options for escape are lost and you meet your demise. Crashing, scavenging, surviving, and escaping make up the base level isle experience that most players undergo. They'll die to the monster the mercenaries a couple times before getting the hang of the game's base mechanics and successfully flying away on the plane or riding away in the boat. However, those who are dedicated enough to stick around and explore can discover the numerous secrets the island has to offer. Sometimes, these hidden locations and tools help you to survive. Other times, they serve as stepping stones in a different escape method. No matter what, it pays to explore. There are currently eight different ways to escape the island. They vary in difficulty, and the main motivation for doing the harder ones is the badge and prestige that comes with the accomplishment. This is a review, not a tutorial, and there's a wealth of excellent guide videos out there, so I'm just going to talk about the general steps in each escape and how I feel about them. The easiest and most common escape is the plane. It spawns on a cliff near the lighthouse and is missing three crucial components. A wheel, a steering wheel, and a propeller. You can find these in the plane shed, the lakeside shack, and the unpowered warehouse, respectively. Attach all the parts and you're good to go. Though the actual integrity of a plane built from aluminum folding chairs and a boat steering wheel is questionable at best. You can also get all the parts from powering the warehouses if you feel like walking an extra half mile. This is objectively the lamest escape, so you can do it for your first time playing, but try to move on to bigger and better things after that. The next easiest escape is the boat escape. Riveting, I know. The boat is entirely intact, except it ain't got no gas in it. Get some gas from the warehouse, fill her up, and you're off into the golden sunset. That is, until you get murked by the same sea monster that wrecked the ship you arrived on. To prevent this, you need to get one of those sonar decoy torpedo things from the shipwreck to fool the sea monster, because obviously it worked out so well for them. Not the most exciting ending, but it does get bonus points for the potential fake out. Nobody ever seems to do the balloon escape. Probably because when you picture heroically escaping from the supernatural horrors of a mysterious island in a hail of gunfire, you don't picture yourself slowly floating away in a hot air balloon. I don't much care for this one. Boom, 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 freedom. Too easy. The facility. Now we're getting somewhere. This one's a three-layered process. You need to pull a long number sequence from the powered observatory monitor, make your way to the lab using the sticky note code in the radio tower or the island's tunnel network, and hack or fight your way through the frog spawn and automatic security systems. Plug in the numbers, beep boop bop, and you're home free Nazi zombie style. Do keep an eye out for cap can traps though, they are deadly. The Feathered. You push all five hidden buttons to open the doors in Ape City and meet the Wish Dragon from Neverending Story. He wants peanuts, which you can only obtain by communing with the Pig Head Mirror Demon and not losing your soul in the process. Once you deliver the peanuts, you can hitch a ride at a dodge and get a scenic aerial tour of the island while you're at it. The Orbit. Push the five buttons, give the dragon some peanuts, but this time ask for its power instead of an escape. You also have to do a Resident Evil Shadow Puzzle and an Indiana Jones Spike Trap slash Parkour segment, which has taken many, many good men before their time. Once all this is done, a spaceship crashes in the most barren part of the map and you gotta kill the surviving mercenaries as well as the alien super soldiers so you can escape to the cosmos with your new extraterrestrial friend. Onyx and I try to do this escape for like two straight days and we haven't been able to pull it off yet. We will. Someday. The Hangar. Straightforward in premise, difficult in execution. Plane needs jack, boat has jack. Hangar has fuel, hangar needs power. It seems like it would be a simple affair to just pump some fuel into the plane and fly out on the airstrip. Unfortunately for you, the sound of the fuel pump makes everything on the island want to kill you. Zombies, parasites, and mercenaries will all flock to the hangar to put an end to the commotion. And you've got to keep the thing running for 20 whole minutes. Needless to say, we haven't beat this one yet either. 
The final escape, The Truth, has the most steps and yields the most lore. Though, to prevent spoilers, I'm gonna save talking about this escape until the end of the video. Isle features a variety of antagonists who regularly put your run in jeopardy. The main one, obviously, is the monster, also known as the experiment, also known as Stan because he follows the generic monster design I ripped on in my Halloween review. I've always held the view that the shadowy, humanoid figure with glowing eyes is the blandest, most unimaginative character design in the whole genre. The monster will attack you in the shadows and gets bolder and stronger every day. The primary threat he poses are his nighttime raids, where he tries to jump you in your sleep. As the ancient saying goes, the man who sleeps with an M249 squad automatic weapon under his pillow is a fool every night but one. The way that the nighttime encounters are calculated is actually pretty interesting. Each day, the monster claims a territory, and if you fall asleep in it, then you're at risk of a rude awakening. Signs that you're in the monster's territory include a lack of birdsong, insect noises, and other natural ambience, creepy music, and sightings of the monster. Do keep this in mind while the sun is up, because the frogs and insects at night do not care if they're in the danger zone, and therefore cannot be relied upon to make a judgment. If he does try to get jiggy with you, just shoot him a good few times and he'll get the message. Next up is <laughs> a whitewashed version of Stan with a Minecraft head that only stalks players who spilt the blood of their comrades. If you kill two actual people, your eyes glow red and this guy just might pay you a visit next time you sleep. According to the internet, this encounter is more rare than spotting an actual unicorn, but I got it the very first night of my very first attempt, so... Skill issue, I guess? Everyone knows the mercenaries. Alpha Team is the initial group that arrives on day two, though it might as well be called the Sniper Team because he's the one who really racks up the kills. This guy is responsible for innumerable player deaths, second only to the monster. Nothing is more nerve-wracking than casually walking through an open area and seeing this message show up at the bottom of your screen. What is a plane prop if not just a sideways ceiling fan? I feel a sniper scope watching me! That was me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you kill everyone in Alpha Team, you'll have the honor of meeting Bravo Team, an even more professional group of mercenaries with an unfathomable budget. They do stuff like sick drones on you, burn you alive, and straight up turn invisible to execute you with a revolver. If you successfully wipe out Bravo Team, you'll be rewarded with the true champion title, an entry that is notably absent from my collection. There are four powerful items around the map called Artifacts that do things like give you x-ray vision, reduce your reload speed, and function as a totem of undying. If you decide to use any of these artifacts, you're liable to meet Agent B6, also known as Mr. X, also known as my invincible pursuer enemy type girlfriend. B6 will appear in a Terminator electricity ball and chase you around at a moderate pace for a while before disappearing for an indeterminate amount of time. He is totally invincible and will easily put you in the ground if he gets a hold of you. Fortunately, you won't have to deal with him if you don't rely on crutches. I mean artifacts. The Gem Serpent is probably the second scariest thing to me on the entire island. It's a giant snake that lives underground and regularly patrols Monkey Land, a series of tunnels that you need to traverse in order to complete the true ending. If the Gem Serpent gets too close to you, it'll hypnotize and immobilize you, leaving you helpless as it closes in. The Parasites are alien super soldiers stuck in stasis around the island. For some reason, you can sabotage their armor while they're asleep, but you can't neutralize them before they become a threat like in Captain America Civil War. The frog summons zombies, also known as frog spawn, to swarm and overwhelm players. The leech has life-stealing space swords that he carves you up with, and the hornet obliterates you with a grenade launcher. It's largely because of these guys that we haven't been able to do those last two escapes. I have mixed feelings about the combat system. On the one hand, it's very unorthodox. You don't see a lot of point-and-click shooters out there. On the other hand, I feel like it fits this game's vibe pretty well. A more traditional first- or third-person shooting system really only works in games where the combat is the main focus. And while it can play a large part in Isle, it's not the primary aspect. The guns also tend to feel a bit weak when used on anything that's not players or frog spawn. Like I've said in previous videos, I prefer combat systems where guns are on the powerful side, and most of the enemies in this game can feel like bullet sponges. The ticking clock aspect of Isle adds a sense of urgency that's a powerful draw for a lot of players. You see a similar system used in popular games like Majora's Mask and Pikmin, and the fact that the game becomes harder as the days go on with reducing visibility, the introduction of new enemies, and beefing up the monster means that you're thoroughly incentivized to do what you have to do as soon as possible. 
You guys already know that I love games with their own badges and achievement systems, and Isle has one of the most involved ones I've seen yet. You can get tons of titles and accolades for encountering enemies, performing escapes, and just exploring the map and picking up collectibles. People love to flex their titles in the lobby, and the pursuit of these adds crucial replayability to the game. Additionally, getting some titles allows you to add a bunch of modifiers to your private servers and change how the game is played. The scariest and most interesting creature on the island is an entity known as the Giver. If you go to the Cursed Path at 8 o'clock p.m., a nondescript wooden hut appears in the jungle. Upon entering the basement of the hut, you encounter the Giver, who appears as a pig's head in a mirror. The Giver is able to grant you powerful buffs and items, but his main objective is to take up as much of your time as possible. As players linger in the basement longer and longer, answering his questions and becoming more powerful, they run the risk of falling asleep in the hut. This is pretty much a death sentence, as when they wake up the next day, they'll find themselves in an inescapable mirror dimension. If you look away from the giver at any point during the conversation, he'll jump out of the mirror and kill you. If you answer his questions incorrectly, he'll sabotage your gift in an effort to harm you. He's one of only three entities in the game that know about the true nature of the island, implying that he's somehow foreign to or beyond the rules of the universe. There's a fishing minigame. It's not necessary for any escapes, but the inclusion of a fishing minigame tends to be a symptom of a good game overall. The terrain can be pretty annoying to navigate. I think this was done so that the devs could bar players from certain areas without the inclusion of invisible walls. Most rock walls are easy enough to traverse, even without a climbing tool, but the grass terrain is deceptively slippery. Now I'm going to talk about the truth escape and the true ending to the game. If you care about spoilers, I recommend that you skip to the conclusion of this video and then go play the game for yourself. Now whenever you die in Isle, you get a little post-game text screen where your character reflects on what went wrong and how you might be able to avoid that death in future runs. Not only is this helpful to the player, but it builds on the lore, as we'll see here in a second. When you perform any escape but the truth, your character will wonder to themselves why, if they escape the island, are they still waking up back here in the lobby. Sometimes when you die, instead of seeing the black screen with the post-mortem reflections, you'll be greeted by a large white lotus flower that asks you what you're doing on the island and gives you hints about how to complete the true ending. The truth is the most complex ending that requires you to get all four artifacts and bring them deep underground, past the basilisk and up to an altar resembling the flower in the post-death monologues. Upon activating the altar using the artifacts, you learn the truth about the island and its inhabitants. It turns out that human civilization has been wiped out for over 300 years, and the last few remaining humans are stuck in cryosleep in a remote bunker. The entire island is a simulation that these humans have been unknowingly living in that's run by two AI controllers, Ivory Mind, depicted as a large large floating head, and Ivory Lotus, the flower that guided you to this point. Ivory Mind is determined to fulfill its base protocol, keeping everyone in the Matrix until humans return to the bunker from the outside world. Ivory Lotus points out that humanity beyond the bunker is long dead, and believes that the compassion, ingenuity, and resilience shown by you, the player, in the Isle simulation proves that humanity is ready to wake up and that you should be released into the real world. They battle each other as you fend off waves of enemies until Ivory Lotus manages to complete your exit protocol and you wake up in the bunker. As you make your way out of the facility and into the snowy wilderness, you come across a lonely cabin and sleep inside. When you wake up the next day, you're still there. And that's the end of Isle. I can honestly say that this game makes my top 5, maybe even my top 3. I love that you can play through any of the other escapes and still have fun without knowing about the nature of the island. And the game still drops enough hints to lead you to the true ending on your own. It's almost as much a puzzle game as it is a survival slash exploration story. You have to manage your items and inventory slots carefully, pay attention to your surroundings, and adapt and refine your plan over different runs to account for enemies and other world events. It's definitely something you should play on your own or with friends, as joining a lobby full of randos almost guarantees you'll be gunned down on the first day by a bloodthirsty player. Overall, Isle is a superb game and a shining example of the great experiences Roblox is capable of facilitating. Maybe I'm just looking at it through rose-tinted heat vision goggles, but I think that Isle deserves my first ever 10 out of 10 rating.